Hey everybody, on today's Locked On Bama, I'm going to welcome in Mr. Joseph Hastings from On3. He's the new Bama beat reporter for On3, which is going to end up being the best in the business when it comes to uh, recruiting websites and all thing Alabama and college football and college basketball. Really just the best. So hang with us. We're getting ready for another Locked On Bama. Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey again, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me. Jimmy Stein, that's normally him. But today, we upgraded. We got Joseph Hastings from On3, which is where Jimmy Stein works as well. Joseph, how are you doing today? I'm doing excellent, Luke. How about yourself tonight? Doing great, buddy, and uh, appreciate you being on with us here in the what I call the shank of the evening, 730. Um, when you're, for, you're pushing 50 like I am, 730 gets to be the wee hour, as we say, <laughs> the, the witching hour. Um, well, let's jump right into it, Joseph. Um, Alabama got a big-time basketball transfer commitment just a minute ago. I was going to lead with something else, but honestly, I feel like the Mark Sears news is big enough to lead with. It absolutely is. I mean, Mark Sears entered the transfer portal just over a week ago, so this is pretty big news for Alabama to get him uh, You know, just over a week after he enters the portal. He averaged 19 points per game last season at Ohio University, scored 20, 20 or more points in 11 of Ohio's final 18 games, including 35 in the season finale. So uh, big time player, big time point guard that Alabama's going to be getting. Obviously, uh, de definitely a need for a program that's, you know, losing a few players here to the transfer portal, potentially to the NBA draft. We saw Jaden Shackelford um, enter his name into the NBA draft. So, yeah, this is a big addition for uh, Nate Oates and company. And obviously, they're probably not done in the transfer portal, to be honest with you, because they've got a couple guys they're looking at, uh, Jalen Luan at – uh, out of Princeton and Jalen Bridges out of West Virginia. He's set to visit uh, during the A-Day game weekend um, next weekend. So, yeah, I don't I don't expect this to be the final portal edition for Alabama. You know, at this point, we're going to have to widen the portal, aren't we? I mean, <laughs> you know, with Jai Hall, Juwan Gary, uh, uh, Alex Chiku. I mean, they're, they're just people jumping in the portal like it's a hot tub, you know, and, and you yeah. just got through running the slopes in Colorado in February. Right. <laughs> it, it's getting kind of out of hand. You know, you see players entering the portal all the time. You know, you know, it's really unfortunate when players enter the portal and they can't find a new home anywhere else. And then they end up, um, you know, not being able to return to the school that they had previously left because their scholarship isn't available anymore. So, you know, that's when it's really unfortunate. But, you know, I, I'm kind of a little bit, uh, you know, traditional. I like to see guys stay there the three to five years that, you know, they they, they signed up for. But. You know, it's just a different day and age. It's kind of, uh, you know, like free agency at this point. Yeah, you know, that's right. And look, I don't – you say you're old school. You you look rather new school, I got to say. I don't know how old you are, but I'm going to say you look like a young man. So um, I, I'm going to tell you, Jimmy and I are the same way. We wish that it – we're all nostalgic, right? I mean, we always wish that, you know, back in my day – I never thought yeah. I'd be a back-in-my-day guy, but I am – um, but this is the new normal, and it's not going to change. I mean, um, the only way I see this transfer portal stuff changing is if uh, the, the Power Five and assorted a few other schools break away and come up with their own system yeah. um, and end up paying players and, and make it where it's a, a, just a, an obvious 100% legitimate business and academics is secondary. Now, maybe academics has been secondary for a long time, uh, at a lot of places. But you know what? Uh, at least the guys of it being there always had you sort of feeling sort of tied into the school, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm a little concerned about the direction everything is going. But for now, I'm thrilled to death. Alabama got Mark Sears. And frankly, uh, while I like Juwan Gary and Jimmy and I discussed him in the last podcast, um, I, I like Juwan Gary, but I'm, I'm also anxious to see, you know, hey, I, I bet Nate Oates can upgrade. Yeah, I, I absolutely. And that's what the portal is kind of for. It kind of works both ways. Um, you know, I, I just wrote an article on on Mark Sears and, you know, talking about uh, him going to Alabama. And I mentioned that, you know, Nate Oates and company are combating the, the portal kind of by going into uh, the portal themselves. So if you're going to lose players to the portal, you have to find 
you know, as much of an equal talent or if not an upgrade, as you mentioned, as you can, which is, you know, sometimes tough, especially now in spring football. You know, th there are some uh, teams that are looking for players in a transfer portal that just kind of don't fit the caliber of player they're looking for. Alabama's a little bit fortunate that, you know, they have, uh, you know, Alabama football, that they have a Tyler Steen that they can look for at this time. But you just you're not always guaranteed to get a to get a guy who could potentially be a starter and. It looks like Sears could be that guy for Alabama in the in the 2022-2023 season. Yeah, and, and like I've uh, pointed out in a couple of podcasts previous, um, Kansas, North Carolina, all they both had uh, transfers that played a role in their get, getting as far as they did in the NCAA tournament. Auburn was a team just about of all newcomers and transfers, and they ended up winning the SEC. And here's the other thing. I'm, I'm all for taking a stand. Uh, but, you know, if you're going to be a fist – sinking into the sea um you, you need to realize hey maybe i need to unclench and grab onto a life raft even coach k at one time said i'm not recruiting the one and done guys well guess what he started doing because he, he was started getting the hell beat out of him so he said okay i guess i'll start recruiting these dudes yeah you have to adjust and you have to be willing to adjust you know there's some programs you know from the football side of things that i've seen um you know that haven't been willing to adjust and have not been um, you know, willing to adapt to that new way of, of recruiting, which is you don't just stop recruiting, recruiting the guys as soon as they sign their, their national letter of intent. You keep on, you, you pretty much have to keep that relationship going. You don't want to burn any bridges because you never know if you're going to end up recruiting that same guy again. And, um, you know, it, that's just kind of the, the, the way that it is nowadays, you know. Um, so I'm really interested in seeing, you know, how it ends up turning out. Like you mentioned, is it going to be something to where the players are, are are paid like by the actual universities themselves or by the programs for which they play for because you know everyone talks about them getting paid now it's you know it's they, they have to go out and earn it essentially with um you know get, getting N N nil deals and, and um you know name image and likeness deals and you know stuff like that so yeah the landscape has definitely changed for sure you know it's kind of like getting married but you keep your little black book just in case, just in case, you never know, right? Yeah. I mean, there's you. You might need to call. You might need to call Rebecca again. <laughs> well, well, you might you, need you, to call you, Heather. You might need to call Kim. Who knows? Uh, all right, buddy. I don't. I know. Um, I you're not familiar with this, but I got to read. Uh, uh, one of our sponsors here got to read about Built Bar. These things are absolutely delicious. Don't know if you ever had them, but you should get you some. I'm telling you, Joseph, you'll love these things. Jimmy and I. Have been talking about them forever. They've been a fantastic sponsor. Go to built.com, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off that order. I'm telling you, you're going to love these things. If you had some, or you just sitting around Sunday watching the Masters, you can have a few built bars instead of eating some of those fatty snacks. These things are delicious. They're covered in chocolate, they only have like 130 calories, uh, low in sugar, high, low in carbs, high in protein, all the good stuff is at built.com use promo code lock 15 get 15 percent off that order go to built.com use promo code lock 15 to get 15 percent off that order you got me convinced <laughs> get, go in. to built.com joseph Dang I'm, it. I'm typing it in right now as we speak <laughs> um all right i'm going to ask you about uh the big one here arch manning uh you've been writing about him a lot you actually predicted him to i'm clutching my pearls georgia um, I don't know what you're doing over there, dude, but that's okay. I want you to, I want you to feel free, explain your terrible prediction. All right. So I do have to know, um, that in that article, I did say with a confidence percentage of 30%. So <laughs> I, I'm not even at 50 there. I'm not really too convinced. Um, you know, either way, you know, it's, it's such a difficult recruitment to read. And I've been really closely, closely following it since September because, uh, for people who don't know, I previously covered Clemson, and Clemson was in the mix for Arch Manning. So, you know, I started contact with his head coach, Nelson Stewart, back in September, and I've been following it, and this has been one of the most fascinating recruitments to follow. Uh, I think it can go either three ways, Georgia, Alabama, Texas. Uh, you know, it would not shock me if he goes to any of those schools right there. Although it, it seems like on the surface, you know, Luke, that Alabama would be the – pretty obvious choice. You know, Texas is coming off a five and seven season. Uh, we don't know how they're going to adjust to SEC competition because that's, you know, that that's in the big 12 that that they had their struggles at. And, you know, um, you know, they, they really just didn't look good. They didn't seem to improve that much throughout the course of the year. And then Georgia, obviously coming off the national championship, that's big time, but they haven't really had too much of a lengthy history of 
showcasing success with big time quarterback talent, bringing them in. And I mean, the, the quarterback that won them the championship was a walk on quarterback. So I, I think that's it's really fascinating because you would think that Alabama, especially with the recent QB success that they've had to attack Viola and Mac Jones and now Bryce Young, you know, winning Heisman. It just it seems like Alabama would be the right choice. Um, you know, Nick Saban's really involved in this recruitment. You know, he kind of gave, uh, uh, you know, kind of a subtle hint at it when on the Manning cast on ESPN last season, talking about hopefully he can coach a Manning. You know, that it just, it just really feels like Alabama would be the obvious choice. But a lot of insiders believe this is 33% each for each program. So I just went with Georgia just because, um, you know, I felt like there's a desire to play there in the SEC, and I think Alabama is really prioritizing Eli Holstein out of Louisiana, who's also out of Louisiana, um, out of Zachary. So, uh, you know, I, I would I would guess that it's Eli to uh, to Alabama, and then um, you know Manning to Georgia or Texas. I had to catch myself there because you know you got an, an Eli and the Manning, so uh, <laughs> a, a yeah. little bit confusing when talking about that recruitment. But yeah, it's a fascinating one. You know. I can certainly see Georgia too for a couple of reasons, but I'm like you, Georgia's quarterback development since I guess Matthew Stafford um, hadn't been necessarily NFL worthy. Right. I mean, yeah. uh, who, um, who am I missing? Aaron. Uh, I'm uh, forgetting the last name right now. Again, I'm getting older. I mean, I forgot where I put <laughs> my privilege in. Um, so it doesn't matter. They, I think Georgia has not had a good track record of developing quarterbacks. And Alabama has, oddly, which we have never have in my lifetime, uh, except yes. these last few years. But, um, you know, and I like Eli Holstein a lot, too. He's, I think he and Arch Manning, Arch Manning is going to get the bump because, number one, he is awesome. But, number two, he's got that Manning name, so people are going to be like, um, I'm not betting against the Manning magic here. So, uh, mm-hmm. and I think. I think that may be an advantage for Georgia in the sense that he wants to play in the SEC. But now conventional wisdom uh, and body language, I think, tells us uh, the Mannings probably they're like, OK, you can play in the SEC anywhere but Alabama almost or Mississippi State. You know, those are probably <laughs> the two places they wouldn't let them play. You'd think. <laughs> And Alabama's only in this because they happen to have the greatest coach of all time coaching right now. Mm hmm. No, no, you're absolutely right about that. And and, and the reason why I, I go with Georgia is just because, look, everyone talks about the, the quarterback development or lack thereof at Georgia and how that could affect Manny's recruitment. But, you know, his family has been very methodical in this process. He and his family have been and also his head coach as well. You know, they, they ha- they're they not going to take these trips if they don't feel like the schools that they're visiting are legitimate contenders, at least at the time. So the fact that he's taking three visits to Georgia – Georgia got the first visit of the spring, you know, you know, it it showcases that there's a lot more interest here and it could kind of make up for, you know, whatever concerns that they may have in terms of the lack of quarterback development. But, um, you know, just the way I see things trending, you know, the way Eli Holstein has been prioritized, it really makes me feel like he's going to be the guy for Alabama in this class. But I recently wrote a piece in which I put Arch Manning at the top of uh, you know, the, the list of names of potentially most wanted 2023 prospects. And that was a list that I made. It wasn't, you know, a, a anything that Al- Alabama is putting out there or whatever like that. That's just per- my, my personal list. And the reason why is because, like you mentioned, he has the Manning name. And also he would attract a lot of recruits that maybe aren't considering Alabama that much. Um, now, you know, you talk about a Ruben Owens, who's a, a heavy Texas lean. Maybe he takes a closer look at, at Alabama. Arch goes there. They're, they're pretty good friends. And John Tay Cook, who's also out of Texas. And maybe there's some big-time offensive linemen like Caden Proctor out of Iowa. It's like, wow, I want to I pass block for, for Arch Manning. That would look really good on my, on my resume. So, yeah, I, ju- I just think that he's such a magnetic recruit and would attract so many prospects that he should be at the top of the list because not only of the talent he'd bring, but the talent that he'd uh, uh, you know, bring around him just by his presence in the class. What about Chris Vizina? This is a guy to me that sort of gets lost in the shuffle a little bit. I, I love him. I think he's fantastic over there Same at here. Briarwood. Um, I, I think he's – look, he's underrated to me, but only because you've got Eli Holstein, you've got Nico Iamaleva, and you've got um, uh, Marge Manning in the same mm-hmm. class. So all of a sudden – you know, he's probably at best the fourth best quarterback in the class, but you forget who else is in the class. I mean, it, it, that's <laughs> not – there's no shame in there. – there's never shame in being the fourth best quarterback in the country, right? 
But this particular year, any other year, he might be the best quarterback in the country. No doubt about it. And first off, I have to correct you just a little bit. And it's only because I actually went out to see this this young man. Um, you know, I went to the West Coast, uh, Nico Iamaliava, which oh took my me about God. 10, 10 or 15 times it took me to get that pronunciation right. Okay, hold it. Hold it. <laughs> I, I was told by somebody else who was, okay, I'm believing you. I, I thought it was so cool because I was like, I'm a Leva. I was like, I can remember that pretty easily. <laughs> You're telling me is what? Iamaliava. 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 I'm gonna have to I'm gonna go to bed saying that. Iamaliava. <laughs> Iamaliava. Look, I'm only doing that because I like talking about these things and I like pronouncing them correctly. And yes. so I have I'm gonna have to go erase like 19 podcasts now. You realize this, right? <laughs> Yeah, I completely feel you. And uh, I've had to erase a couple of mine because I, I used to cover Clemson and I I can't tell you how many times I mispronounced DJ Uyunglele. Uh It took me a while to get that name right. And then I had to work on Tua Tagaviola. And I'm sure there's going to be another another name out there from, from the West Coast that I'm going to struggle. Oh, JT Tua Malau. Uh, that was another interesting oh, yeah. name to, to try and pronounce. But yeah, I, I had gotten a chance to, to spend time with Nico one on one um, back in September, um, actually back in November, and uh, his family was they, they were just awesome people, and uh, you know I spent like 10, uh, 10 minutes trying to get that name pronunciation right because I was saying that the same way you did. I'm Oliva, uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, but going back to your original point, yeah, Christopher Vizina, I, I I really like him. Uh, I've seen him a couple of times in person one time throwing at a seven on seven event in, in Atlanta. Uh, first off, just a great kid. He's, he is, he is going to be a perfect ambassador for your program. He is just, just a, a great person all around. And he, he's going to be able to attract people with just that, that type of personality. And I think he has the necessary leadership skills too. And he can throw the ball. <laughs> I mean, he, he, he's, yeah. he made a few like ridiculous throws at the seven on seven. I saw him in which he just dropped it right into the bread basket in the back of the end zone multiple times. Uh, his receivers let him down a little bit on, on a couple of occasions, but he didn't let that discourage him. He didn't blame them at all. He just said, okay, let's go back to the next play. I, I really like him. I think um, I think we at On3 have him as a top 20 overall prospect. We're much higher on him than than everyone else is. We, we really like him. But at the end of the day, him not getting offered shows that Alabama has confidence in Eli Holstein or Arch Manning. That's how I interpret it. Yeah, and look, again, I, I, if we, if Alabama just said, you know what, we're not playing the waiting game anymore, we're going to take Christopher Zena right now, I'd be thrilled to death. So, um, yes. my only, my only worry is, and, and it's just because I'm a pessimist by nature, I just don't want to strike out on all three of them. That's my only point there. So, no, 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 um, you bring up an absolutely great point there because if they want to get Christopher Zena in this class, or they feel like they may be slipping with Arch Manning and and Eli Holstein, and they have to go the Vizina route, you know, is it is it too late? You know, I talked with him at, at the 7-on-7 seven seven camp, and he said, you know, just because they offer me doesn't mean that they're going to be the, the top scorer or anything like that. I have to build that relationship with them. He's admitted that the contact just hasn't been there like it is with other schools, particularly Clemson. I, I really feel like Clemson's on that right track, and if he commits uh, in the spring like he previously told me he could, uh, yeah, it, it feels like he would be going to Clemson, but who knows? Maybe he gets on Alabama's campus and they offer him. But uh, uh, until then, it feels like it's going to be Eli Holstein or Arch Manning in this class. And it's Nico what? N N N I said it the other way. Now I, I, I got a messed up. Ia Maliava. <laughs> Ia Maliava. See, Ia Maliava. it was easy for me to say. I'm a I'm a lever because it's like, hey, what are you gonna do if if you found out your uh, girlfriend's cheating on you? I'm a lever. I'm a lever. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> all right, I got to tell everybody now about BetOnline.net. This is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, including this week's Masters Championship odds, podcasts, and reviews for all the different leagues this season. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports and scores, and Vegas casino games. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline is where the game starts. All right, bud. Um, I got to ask you about a Jai Hall just real quick. I mean, it, it, look, the, the saga's over. He's in the transfer portal. But, man, was this, just, was this kind of a weird thing to cover? 
Yeah, it, it was. Um, you know, honestly, I started the Alabama beat a few weeks ago, so I really haven't been able to experience the full Jai Hall uh, saga, but uh, the little bit that I got to experience was interesting. <laughs> you know, the, the report came out about him entering the – or not him entering the portal, but him not being on the team's roster and, um, you know, not being a member of, of the team at the time. And, you know, he, he said – you know, news to me and an FS, which, you know, people interpreted as, you know, something that I'm not allowed to say on here. But, um, you know, I, I found that to be interesting that he would go public with that kind of sentiment. And then, then now he's in the transfer portal. I think, you know, based off what I've read, read on our BCS board, our, our message board uh, on on3.com, that people are kind of glad that this is over, that they're done with the drama. And it feels like it's a kind of addition by subtraction for Alabama. Yeah, and I'm going to say this for the record. I've said it everywhere. Um, I'm pulling for him. I hope it's an Alvin Kamara situation. I hope he goes somewhere and gets everything. I don't even know if turned around is the right term because it may not be in the wrong direction. I don't know. He's just not fitting in at Alabama, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's not for everybody. And um, maybe he goes somewhere else and kicks butt and then, you know, is a top 10 draft pick. I would be rooting for him. I am a, a Jai Hall fan. I just think it's time sometimes for, uh, you know, two people to uh, not be together. I like ketchup and I like ice cream. I don't like ketchup on my ice cream, you know. <laughs> so well, well, th This is what the portal is all about, right? You know, it's right. about, uh, you know, at least – Kind of the spirit of it is, you know, maybe maybe it just doesn't work out. Maybe the the two sides aren't are jo aren't driving together, and you can, it, you know, both, you know, separating is the best option for them. You know, and, and a guy could find a you know newfound success at maybe Florida. I know one of the defensive backs is already recruiting him. So, yes, I I, I think uh, you know. <laughs> I see the shaking of the head there. I'm, I'm a University of Florida grad, by the way. So, I, I you know, if there's any uh, Gator bias that comes out there, I apologize. But <laughs> no, no, no. I'm I'm just saying that's the new normal. I'm shaking my yeah, head. It like, is, yeah. And that's and you can't. There's nothing you can do to stop it. So, I mean, I'm I'm only shaking my head, saying it, I can't imagine being a coach right now. You, yes. We we've said this a hundred times. Nick Saban has to be a cyborg. He also has to have some kind of insider knowledge from his doctor that says, when you quit coaching now, you better have your affairs in order, you know, mm -hmm. because I can't imagine being a coach who's made plenty of money, got plenty of fame, can, can chill out at Lake Burton and be like, I want to go put up with this. I want to go put up with a dude that um, is immensely talented that we give him the a chance. It doesn't necessarily work out, but he's given me some problems on social media. And then there are other people on social media on other teams already recruiting him. Who in the heck wants to deal with it from one guy, much less 85? Th then the great thing is Nick Saban is not on Twitter. He's does That's not right. have to he does not have to deal with that nonsense because if you live on Twitter, it'll it'll drive you insane. And um, you know, situations like that will drive you crazy as well. So I think Look, Nick Saban's been doing this for a long time, and he looks like he can do it for another 10 years, it feels like. And the reason why is because he probably doesn't let things like this bother him too much. Guess what? A Jai Hall out, we already bought in Jermaine Burton. We'll, we'll bring in another another guy via the transfer portal. A Jai Hall out, let's go get Brandon Innes on campus here too. Let's go Let's go recruit a, a couple more five stars, you know, uh, five-star wide receivers. There, there's just – the Alabama brand speaks for itself. The Nick Saban brand speaks for itself. It's it's all going to be fine. They're never going to have any issues with accumulating talent. I think that's kind of how he feels. Maybe maybe there's another receiver in the portal eventually. Like uh, maybe, I don't know, I'm just picking a name out of the air or something that may rhyme with Weishan Mute or something. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Yep. Um, you wrote a story on Edric Houston, who's the number one edge for 2024. Uh, I've learned a few things in life, and by listening to the 70s channel on Sirius XM, you don't um, pull on Superman's cape, you don't spit into the wind, and you don't pick a fight with a dude named Edric who spells it E-D-D-R-I-C-K. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm not messing with that dude. Yeah, yeah, I'm not messing with him either, and it, uh, it seems like Alabama would want him on uh, their team so they don't have to go up against him at the next level, uh, specifically Georgia, the, the in-state Bulldogs there. And look, Alabama's had success recruiting at Buford High School, which is where Edric is from, you know, land Jake Pope and Isaiah Bond in the 2022 cycle, and then you had Seth McLaughlin uh, a couple of cycles ago. So, you know, there's obviously some 
some history there. And they're recruiting not one, not two, but three big time players from the school. King Joseph Edwards, by the way, just like the greatest name of all time, King Joseph. Uh, you know, my name is Joseph, and I, I kind of wish my mom would have just put a king in front of there. It just would have uh, would have made things a lot easier for me. And then you got K.J. Bolden as well at Buford. So you got three guys that Alabama's really after out of that school. And who just based on the way that they've been recruiting there, it's, it's kind of safe to say they'll land at least one of them, maybe two. So, And if you land all three, you're looking, like, you're looking at one of the best classes in 2024 already. So, uh, yeah, he visited, like this time with Nick Saban. That's not too much of a surprise. I hear that a lot. Actually spent some time with McLaughlin and, and um, Will Anderson as well. So um, spoke with Coleman Hutzler, spoke with Freddie Roach. So out of all the prospects I've talked to, um, you know, over the past few weeks since I joined the Bama Beat, he kind of seemed to be the one who talked with, you know, the most people. And, um, you know, I, I think that's really interesting. I think he's a top priority for them and he has high interest in Alabama. Uh, Joseph, this was awesome, man. Thank you for your time. I know you're tired. I know I'm tired. Um, <laughs> so uh, we'll call it a day right here. But appreciate your time so much. Tell everybody how they can uh, find you on On3. Yes, so go ahead on uh, Twitter. If you want to find my my handle, type in at Joseph A. Hastings. And then on On3, you can just type in uh, bcs.com. It'll bring you to our site. You can read some of our recruiting coverage. going to be having a visitor preview for uh, what's to come ahead this weekend, uh, which prospects will be getting on campus. Also, uh, some visit recaps as well. So be sure to, uh, you know, to hit up Bama, uh, Bama coming soon, BCS, and check out our great work on there. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, buddy, and uh, we'll have you on again soon. Until then, roll tide, buddy. Roll tide. Thank you, Luke.